I got into a fight with a cheese grater. Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. So I'd like to talk to you about what is easily the most misunderstood idea in introductory science. Entropy. Isn't entropy just like energy or momentum? I mean, they're all pretty abstract. Yeah, at first glance, it kind of seems like any other weird thing we'd measure. So it's kind of unclear why we misunderstand it. As with most misunderstood concepts in science, the problem is very subtle. In the early 1800s, there were these nagging holes in our understanding of heat and temperature. In fact, back then it wasn't even called heat. They thought it was a magical fluid that flowed between objects, and they called it caloric, which is the origin of the word calorie, the unit of energy used on food labels. Remember, at that time we had no knowledge of things like atoms. Finally, in 1865, the term entropy was coined by a German physicist named Rudolf Clausius. According to the online etymology dictionary, the word entropy means in turning. The Clausius was going for something more like inside transformation, and he made it sound like energy on purpose. Bastard! That same year, he wrote the first modern form of the second law of thermodynamics, which says the entropy of the universe tends toward a maximum. In other words, as long as you're considering everything, the entropy always increases. Keep in mind, this principle can be extended to containers smaller than the universe, as long as those containers can be considered unaffected by their surroundings. It it wasn't until we discovered atoms and began modeling them in the early 1900s that we truly began to understand what entropy was. It's not difficult to understand why the water in this container has energy if you consider all its little parts. Super zoom! Every one of these molecules has energy because they're zipping around, they wiggle, and they nudge each other. If we add up all the energy of all the molecules, we just get the total energy of the water. There's nothing extra and nothing missing. We can't make sense of entropy this way because individual molecules do not possess entropy. Yet the entire container of water does. So where the heck does it come from? It's a reasonable question. Entropy is actually something we call an emergent property, which is a property that arises when the whole is more than the sum of its parts. You are an emergent property. Entropy, though, is something we're inherently aware of, even if we don't realize it. Let's say you see something like this. It would be very natural for you to conclude two things. One, the coloring will spread until it's uniform throughout the water. And two, the coloring was added to the water right about here. If you run this process in reverse, you can tell instantly that it's going in reverse, simply based on your personal experience in similar situations. The entropy would be decreasing, which would violate the second law of thermodynamics. However, if we take a closer look again, super zoom! Here are two water molecules colliding inside the container. Looks just fine. Now here's that same collision in reverse. Well, there's nothing wrong with that either. Entropy seems to just emerge when there are enough of those molecules in one place for statistics to become important. Okay, so what is it? There are a few ways to understand what entropy actually is, but all of them involve analogies. An old school definition is that entropy measures the disorder of the energy of a collection of particles. Let's say we're going to drop a rock from this cliff. At the beginning, the energy is all nice and collected inside the rock. By the time the rock gets to the bottom, the energy has spread out into the air and into the ground, leaving only some of it still inside the rock. You can literally see the increase in disorder of the energy. But the word disorder can be very subjective and we have to be very careful. In science, we strive for objectivity. Sometimes we fail at it, but we try. We have something to help us with this problem called the messy room analogy. Assume for a moment that the items in the following rooms represent the energy. Not the particles, the energy. There's a difference. This room looks pretty organized, so by analogy we say low entropy. And this room looks pretty chaotic. By analogy, we can say high entropy. But are you sure? This really depends on who lives in the room. If you ask the owner for something specific, like a t-shirt, and they tell you it would take a search party, then sure, it's chaotic. But what if they respond by walking immediately to a pile of clothes and pick up the shirt? That's what we might call organized chaos. If they know where everything is, then the room is still technically organized. The same goes for the energy in that cliff example. It's not disordered because it's all over. It's disordered because the universe itself has lost track of the energy's origins. This picture might have the same number of dots as this picture, but there is no way to know if they're the same dots. Maybe it was these, or these, or even these. Thanks a lot, Entropy! It's like the universe has a witness protection program for its energy, and we call that Entropy. So which kind of room is your bedroom? Let us know in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. 
If you want to wear a cool shirt like this, or maybe like these, they're available at scienceasylum.spreadshirt.com. For the lazy people, there's an annotation over there. There's also a permanent link in the channel's banner if you want to check it out later. You know, no pressure or anything. Click it!